American public, we care about you so much that you just can't go do anything because we want you to be safe. You know, like, no, no. look, yeah. Take off the damn knee pads, mom. I don't need them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we're recording. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number 13 of the Winston Boys podcast, exploring wealth, science, and wisdom through philosophical debates. My name is Kush. And my name is Alex. And today we're going to be talking about some interesting bioethics kind of stuff um, from COVID to euthanasia. So yeah, interesting. Yeah. So some, some strange and um, inevitably controversial uh, material for you guys today. That was a, that was a jump right there. <laughs> It was. It was. It, it, we went from comp side. We we cover all kinds of random stuff in here. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Um. Yeah. I can't believe it's episode thirteen already. It's kind of wild, isn't it? I'm, I'm really surprised. Yeah. Seems like we just longer started. than an internship. Yeah. Honestly, that's crazy. Yeah. It really is. Um. All right. So, uh, you want to get started with uh, just go in order or? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I think it's perfect in order. Honestly. All right. So everyone, I'm sure you kind of, um, I, I recently, I don't know how many of our viewers watched this, but I recently watched um, President Biden's address to the nation. Um, and personal, personally, I think he did a very good job with it. But of course, that's up to, um, up to personal opinion. Um, but I did take um, kind of issue with some, some of the things he said about when COVID was going to be over. Um, and I personally disagreed with him. And I kind of wanted to talk about... Um, you know, because there are people who are, you know, already they're like, okay, that's it. No more mask. I'm taking it off. Right. COVID's over. And it's like, I don't think so, man. I don't know what planet you're living on. Maybe in, maybe in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, you know, the Texas governor, oh yeah, we don't need any more precautions. Uh, okay. See how that goes. Um, and at the same time, you have people who are like, well, you know, you know, Biden said, oh, well, you know, by July 4th, you may be able to have a cookout with a couple close friends who have also been vaccinated. And I'm like, mm. yeah, it's it seems a little bit like uh, I'm trying to appeal to, to so, everyone now. Yeah, I, I think that I think that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the Mark of a Mark. Yeah, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, smoked meats video. <laughs> Zuckerberg. Oh, 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 my bad. Yeah. Sorry. Keep going. Um, you know, the, the video where it's like, I'm smoking some meats and he's just like, uh, it's really funny if you ever look it up, but it's like, it's like such a meme. He's like, oh yeah, I'm like a, you know, cool, cool dad, you know, grilling on the back porch, smoking some meats. And it just sounds like so inauthentic. Like he's clearly yeah. like a robot before. I mean, he's literally um, a robot. That's, yeah, that's what he, he is. is. He's like, I don't have this script, please help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Object not recognized. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I got a little sidetracked there. Um, anyway, so I thought that a good, a good place to start off is like, okay, let's talk about where we, let's kind of abstract it a little bit because I think everyone's emotions are running a little bit high with COVID. I know mine certainly are. I'm sick of this thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah. think anyone like it. Like, you know, I'm all in favor of wearing a mask when the mask needs to be worn, but like, you know, I'm tired of it, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Get it off from me, it itches, okay? <laughs> um, I think, you know, um, so I think, I think we need to kind of, take a step back and look at it. So, uh, you know, the end is in sight, but what is the end, I guess? Yeah. Uh, so in my view, um, you know, actually, Kushaga, why don't you go and you give your view first? Because I've been talking a lot. No, no, that's, I mean, we, I, we I need a break. I'm out of breath. You go. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, so, I mean, yeah, like, I, I guess I'm, I guess I'm hopping in. Yeah, I know. I mean, you mentioned like the whole Texas, the the Texas governor thing. I mean, I guess, like, I feel like with, with that, like, I feel like more so, like, he's trying to send, like, a message and, like, maybe not just a message to, like, his supporters, but to the country that, like, hey, like, if you're sick of this thing, come here because it's over in Texas. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I think that's the, I think that's the whole point of that. Yeah. I think it's a political stunt somewhat, too, which is not good when you're, when people's lives are in the balance. Yeah. Um. Right, like yeah, we're owning the libs by ending the uh, ending the mask requirement, but yeah, 
I just the rules of living. I did. Time. I did. I did hear on the news though on on Friday. What is it now? Like it's sixty percent of people over age eighty or sixty or something are vaccinated now. It's it's. Yeah, getting I, was, I, I heard something about that. I think it's. God, I, I'm not going to even try. Seventy seventy percent for some demographic. I can't remember which one. Yeah, yeah it's I some mean, at risk. I think I think most of the old people I know are vaccinated, so that's really good. Yeah, uh, and I'm thrilled about that. Honestly, I'm really excited because I get to go to um start going to Easter services with my granddad um because we both in a couple weeks because uh you know it's getting I'm Greek Orthodox and we're kind of getting close to our close to our Easter season and um you know that's always kind of a special time of year and I'm really looking forward to going to church with my granddad because uh, it's really important to him and it's important to me and you know I haven't really been able to see him a lot because of COVID and he doesn't really want to you know hug me or anything even when I go over you know it's kind of like ah oh, stay over there you might be infected yeah so, uh, you know um it'll be really nice I haven't seen him in person since I came to school so I'm excited uh so yeah the vaccine is incredible anyway um yeah so i agree with you um this is not the time for stunts um but i would also say that i'm sympathetic because i mean the covid guidelines are kind of insane you know what i mean like in a normal time right if i if i all right kushagra kush you need to you need to wear a mask around all your friends and you can't go see your grandparents and you can't eat indoors and there's no reason for it right like that's that's a terrible idea right like no one no one would want that you know what i mean like yeah. it's uh that's cruel right <laughs> no one wants yeah. to live like that all the time for no reason but there's a good reason right now and, I, and that's that's a different thing you know um yeah. but i think it's an it's a public health emergency you know what I mean? And I, I say that in quotes because that's the words, right? Like, I, I'm not saying like sarcastic, like that's what this is, is it's a public health emergency. I'm emphasizing that because emergency, you know what I mean? And for me, at least, I think that the government has a lot of latitude when, when it's an emergency, you know what I mean? Like, oh, there's this an imminent threat, right? Like existential people, huge numbers of people are going to die. Our country could be very badly harmed, you know? In that case, the government has, you know, because you can't give a government every power it needs to possibly exercise during a crisis, right? So it has a lot of latitude in an emergency, right? Yeah. But once the emergency is over, you don't just get to keep that power, right? That's like, uh, that's some Palpatine shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got to let it go, you know, you got to say, okay, well, look, deaths are below, let's say, uh, 300 a day. Uh, most people are vaccinated. Yeah, we still have... 10,000 cases every week, but like the emergency is over. So we hope everyone keeps wearing their mask and we hope restaurants stay closed, but it's not an emergency anymore. So we can't do anything about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, to me, at least the, the, I think that I would be very, um, I'm fine with, I, I trust personally, I, I trust the government right now. And I think they're trying to do the best they can. Um, I would love to hear something like, oh, we'll give up our emergency powers here and we will, you know, once this is no longer an emergency, look, we're the last ones who are going to try to, you know, make you do something you shouldn't have to do. Um, that's what I'd like to hear personally. What do, what do you think? Man, I got, I got to, I got to tell you, I, I think, uh, I think, you know, I, I think Fox was right at the beginning of this pandemic. <laughs> like, I think, uh, I think Fox they were, I think, I, I think they were right about one thing. Like, cause I remember, I literally remember like I, I would, uh, so I, I watched CNN like like on actual live TV and I was watching Fox on YouTube. So mm -hmm. I was hearing it from both sides. I remember they kept saying like, oh, like all of these like more like liberal states governors are taking this as an opportunity to like seize power and all this stuff. And I was kind of like, yeah, it'll be. I mean, it is, it, it, it's, that's all BS, whatever. But now that I look back, they're kind of saying the right thing. It's like, you know, like like who like wh who's a government to like make all these rules like oh you can walk on the dry sand but not the wet sand or and, and, you yeah know, no i stuff. i agree and that's what, like like i said that's why i think it's so important like emergency and i mean a strict definition right like the siren needs to be on man okay yeah. you're not just going to the er in the car you're like bleeding in the back of the ambulance emergency okay that's what i count as an emergency right and yeah that's a different situation you know what i mean I think there, there are cases when, you know, in a war, the government needs to say, okay, everyone, turn off your lights and get in the damn bunker, right? Because we're getting bombed. And people can't be like, well, who are you to, <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's a guy everywhere, okay? Like, it's not the time, right? Unless we take the guy and put him out in the middle of the desert and, they're, and then we're like, okay, now, now you can do whatever you want. 
you can get nuked way out here, out outward. There's no one else. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm just yeah. kidding, by the way. I mean, <laughs> oh boy, here we go, going going viral on TikTok for uh, suggesting nuking people. I yeah, can, I can see that. I can see the, <laughs> the viral. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, so I do. I didn't mean to interrupt your interrupt your. No, your I think I'm I'm kind of done with my rant there. Um, let's. I, I'm kind of curious about what you have to say about it. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with what you're saying. Like, I, yeah. I mean, I, it all makes sense to me. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think we're kind of getting to the point where it's like you know, like, I I think at some point, like the you know, we have to get kind of creative and you know, I, I think mandates are good because you know like when there's an emergency going on forcing someone to do something can kind of help move things quickly but uh at least in my opinion the way i I think government should function is more like you know how do we create incentives now for people to do the right things and uh take a step back um which i kind of i mean honestly i i I kind of feel like that should have the stuff should have started a little bit earlier but i know it's like a political thing i don't want to piss anyone off and to be fair uh, I don't think that time is yet. Let me be clear. We are not there yet. Um, right. I mean, we have like 20% of the population vaccinated. I'm thinking 50, 60, 70%, you know, that, that, that maybe that awkward month where we haven't hit herd immunity yet and there's still cases, but like, it's a lot lower, you know what I mean? And that's coming, I think. Um, yeah. But I don't, I don't think we need to play the numbers game totally. Right. And say, look, one COVID death is too many. We need to keep the whole country in lockdown, right? <laughs> yeah. Kind of, uh, what was that play, Goss? Uh, you know, Taming of the Shrew. That's what it was, Coach. Taming, taming of the Shrew. Um, and it was like a really sexist play by Shakespeare that was like this guy married this kind of like um, raunchy woman. She was kind of a pain in the butt. And, um, and basically he was like, oh, yeah, um, you're so perfect and beautiful that um, and, you know, and you deserve so much because you're so strong and like, you know, you, she, she really was kind of a pain in the ass. Like it wasn't just like sexism at the time. I mean, obviously there's sexism at the time, you know, like she was also a pain in the butt to be fair. Um, <laughs> you're so great that you don't, you don't get anything, you know, I, I was going to give you dinner, but it's not good enough for you. So you don't get any food instead. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I, we don't want to end up in that kind of situation, you know, where it's like, ah, uh, well, American public we care about you so much that you just can't go do anything because we want you to be safe. You know, like, no, no, look, yeah. Take out the damn knee pads, mom. I don't need them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which I think conveniently this point that you're making, and since we're, we're 12 minutes into this, I think this actually oh, very conveniently takes us into the next, next yeah. thing. See, I'm temporarily challenged. I don't know how to run on time. No, no, no. But that was perfect timing. That's the only Wonderful. reason I brought Wonderful. it up. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. I, I do apologize. We do these 10 minute segments, you know, and Porco just like, dude, come on, let's go. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's, dude, sometimes it's, I mean, a lot of times it's me. Like I'm the I, one who's like rambling. Joking. You can ask my girlfriend. I'm always late. <laughs> um, so uh, the bioethics of fighting COVID is our next thing. Um, and basically I kind of wanted to talk about, and I'm no expert on this, but I kind of want to talk about what Kush and I think uh, the medical system has done well and not so well here, just as, you know, I guess kind of too late people. I have some, I have a decent bit of medical experience. I've to give to give our viewers kind of some disclosure um, about why why I think I'm qualified, which I don't think I'm that qualified, but I'm probably qualified a little bit, know a little bit more about it than a lot of people. Um, I've volunteered at a hospital for like three summers and I've worked in a hospital lab for like several, let's see, one, two, three years. So I've I've kind of been working in and around a hospital um, for the past like oh my gosh six years, um, and you know interacting with medical professionals and doctors and I have a sense of that sort of thing, um, and and I guess yeah I don't know I just felt like I should <laughs> give a disclaimer there. Yeah, no, that's 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 fine. Um, so what do you what do you think? I don't know, Kishaga. You've been watching the news and stuff probably more than I have. What do you think about uh? you know, what, what, what has the medical system done well? I mean, I, I don't, okay. First of all, I don't, I don't know if watching the news qualifies me for this. I learned a lot literally from reading your write-up. So, and from you explaining it. So I, I, I'm, I'm here to learn. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I know we were kind of, we were discussing it a bit before. Like, I, I know you, you talked about um, uh, like, like you were kind of talking about like, you know, one of the, 
big issues that I thought was interesting, at least. And I, I know you're kind of hitting on this, right? When we transition to this was, uh, you know, this whole like social disconnect, right? Like we were like trying to keep old people safe. Um, yeah. Medically. Yeah. No, I definitely want to talk about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, but that's not something they did good. What, what did they do good? Come on. We got to start positive, man. Come on. Oh, is that, is that what you asked me? Dude, I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm like, I, I totally like, I totally criticism, that. man. Constructive. We okay. I, for a second, I forgot your question. I was like, did he just, did he ask me to just like say something? And I was like, uh, let me. That's let me, some, uh, isn't that direction. some, uh, how to influence people and make money or whatever that money that, that book is. Are you talking about how to win friends and influence people? Yeah. Yeah. That one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's like, that's, you know, you always give people a compliment or something before you insult them. Isn't that how it works? That's yeah. That's how it works. Actually, you never insult them. You you give them a compliment and then you say and and then you disguise the insult as uh, continuing your compliment. I, Shagar, you know, you have great hair, man, but you're just, you know. No, it's not. No, hair. not but it's it's you have you have great hair and it would and be so awesome person. if you talk <laughs> and it would be so awesome if you talked about the positives before the negatives. You know? There we go. There we go. Kushagra, your hair looks great today, man. And you know it would be so great if you talked about the positives before the negatives. So. Oh, that was a br- that was an awesome compliment. I didn't detect any criticism in there. I'm going to talk about the positives. Now. Only compliments. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so to, to answer your question now, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the medical system did did you know like or at least I'm no expert, but I, like I think from like what I saw in the news, like it seemed they're doing like good stuff, right? Like with like, um, like once they started getting the ventilators around, and I think the biggest thing that shocked me. I don't know if this is necessarily part of the medical system, but like the speed at which the vaccine came in and the fact that it's going to be like ready for all adults by the end of May, like that just blows my mind. Like, oh, I, I don't, I don't. It's absolutely, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I just certainly didn't expect that. I didn't think we'd be seeing one for like a while and realize we've had this vaccine since like December of 20, uh, 2019. I think is when this vac- is when the Pfizer one like was first developed and they were doing mm-hmm. testing for a year. But like they had the vaccine like almost immediately afterwards. I don't know, maybe it was in December, but it was a few like a couple of months after COVID like was detected. And they were like, okay, well, we got a vaccine, let's start development. But it takes a little while, you know, because you know, you don't want to, you know, contrary to the um anti-vaxxers' beliefs, you know, um, vaccines don't cause autism. And there's a reason for that. It's because they test it first to make sure it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Um and uh yeah, so I, I absolutely agree. I think that was an exceptional effort. And I also want to give huge props to just, you know, local communities and stuff where they're working with the medical system. Um, I mean, there wasn't really a federal response uh, for shots until pretty recently. And there still really isn't. Like, I don't know, the Biden administration, I think they're really trying to get it there. But like, federal government is big and slow. You know, I think it's like turning a big ship. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, like, yeah. I'm not trying to make this political, but like the Trump administration did not have like a vaccine distribution plan. And Biden's like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a site. And we're going to have like, you know, a, a website and we're going to have like work with local leaders and, you know, like stuff like that. I'm like, OK, that's but, really good. We'll see if that happens. But that'd be really great if they could get that. But right now there's basically nothing. It's just like, OK, I call Walgreens and ask for a vaccine. You know, like um, it's kind of a mess. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I thought I could be wrong, but wasn't Trump like the I, I again, I could be. I don't know anything about the distribution plans, but didn't wasn't his administration the one that started like production of all the vaccines before they were approved that way like they were ready to go or is that uh i don't remember honestly i don't know if he did that was a good idea and I, I, I thought i thought i remember that. seeing that on the news i just wanted to um, be fair and put it out no there yeah i mean i think was... i think he did a pretty decent job of operation warp speed i think it was pretty successful um i don't want to give him too much credit for that because i think that the scientists did most of it I mean, he didn't develop the vaccine, right? And I always, it always kind of ticked me off. It's like, yeah, I made this great vaccine. No, you didn't, dude. You had told us to inject bleach. <laughs> yeah. That's your understanding of medical stuff, okay? So zip it. But I mean, he did do a good job of deregulating the whole thing, which normally I'm not in favor of. But again, emergency in flashing red letters, emergency deregulation is fine with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and this is a flashing red letters emergency, okay? Like the siren's on, okay? Like I said, the siren's on. I'm okay with deregulating the process a little bit to speed it up, okay? Yeah. I was one of the first people to get the vaccine. I had a little weird side effect from the second one, but I was fine after like a week. And I was, you know, I'm really happy I got it. Great experience. And everyone I know who's gotten it has had a good experience. So it worked out great. Um, Yeah. Now let's go to the negatives. What do you think? 
fish. What do you, what's the and? What's the and? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's like a callback. Yeah. I mean, so I just, I think again, I'm going to bring up the same thing. I thought the most interesting thing that, that you had brought up, and I think one of the coolest angles is literally just like the, the lack of regard for, uh, for mental health. And I'll throw in another example too. Like, I know there's like a YouTuber who, who's like fighting, like for, for, uh, keeping his gym open in California. Like his name is Bradley Martin. Um, and he's had a whole thing where like when COVID started, he shut down his gym for like a month or two. Um, and then he, he said, and he opened it back up and he put his own restrictions in place, even though California said all the gyms had to close down. And he was like, there's like young, healthy people out there who need to go to the gym, who go to the gym for, for their mental health. Like they suffer different like mental health issues. And the only thing that keeps them from taking these different drugs and stuff is going to the gym. Um, yeah. And so he's been like having, like he, I think he, he's gotten sued or something by like the, by either like Los Angeles or the state of California and he's fighting to keep the gym open. Um, hmm. But I was going to throw that out there as like another story of. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I mean, there's people like that. Um, and I wouldn't even say necessarily the gyms, but I would say, um, uh, and this isn't related to medicine. So I don't want to criticize the medical field for doing this. This is, this is policymaking, right? That wasn't, that wasn't the hospitals telling me, you know, the hospitals, like the doctors didn't march out and be like, Hey, you shut down your gym or we'll beat you with our stethoscopes. Okay. Like, yeah, it is the government. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, I think that, uh, you know, again, not criticizing the medical field for this, but, um, I think that, uh, the, um, I think that it's really important to realize that, um, you know, the impact this had on kids too, on like young children. Right. I mean, mm. imagine missing a whole year of school and you can't see any of your friends. Like that's like bad for kids. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these people, like, you know, especially like disadvantaged children with like, you know, maybe, you know, mom works and dad's an alcoholic or something, you know, what do you do? Right. Who's, who's making you do your work? You're nine years old. You're not accountable for doing your own work. Someone's got to make you do it, you know? I was sure wasn't I shit I'm not accountable now sometimes <laughs> yeah you know what I mean <laughs> oh yeah um but you know like at nine especially you know I wouldn't have done anything if someone hadn't told me to do it I have no idea why I'm doing that stuff you know why it's important you're a little kid and uh you know that's that's a failure of the government to say look we gotta we gotta take care of disadvantaged kids look let let parents choose to send their kids to school um in a safe way the safest way we know how right but those kids are important, you know, um, because it's not that it's not the, you know, necessarily the rich white kids, the rich white kids in Louisville who are struggling with that. You know, it's it's the kids who went to, who grew up next to Haynes. You know what I mean? And they're already yeah. suffering from enough. You know, I mean, it's I, I honestly think COVID has been terrible for marginalized communities and stuff because if you're already at a socioeconomic disadvantage and then like. All of a sudden, you may or may not have computers at home for your kids. You may or may not have to work them. You may or may not have to get internet access, you know? And all of a yeah. sudden, they're like, yeah, well, if you don't have internet access, I guess you're not going to class, you know? If mom and dad aren't home to watch yeah. it, I guess you may not go. It's up to you. Dude, I, I got to, I got to, yeah, I, I got I to gotta tell you. Like, I actually, I was in Winston last night to just have like dinner with my parents, and I, I mm -hmm. was coming back today. And I just thought it'd be cool to drive by downtown when I was coming back. And I literally remember, so I was going through downtown, you know, they have all the bridges and stuff they're working on. It looks really pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, it, like it feels like a bigger city now, which is kind of cool. Um, and as soon as you get past that last bridge, right. And you get over the hill, like you see, you know, you're going over 52 and now you can see the east side of 52. It's like grim, like the sky turns gray. Like it's just like old uh, crappy, like buildings and trees and yeah. lines. Like, no, I mean, when it's awful. Is a it's a very gentrified, I mean, I went on a run today and I mean, I was like running and I was like in West, Indian. I don't know if you that were nowhere that is, but it's like right by the hospital. It's right, yeah, right, yeah. right by Brunson. And um, I mean, you cross the highway and it's like all of a sudden you dropped a couple of zeros off the income level. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And it's like, you know, like, wow. Like these people, I mean, think, think about it. Like, you know, I mean, A, it's bad that our city's so gentrified. Um, and, and, and it's quite frankly a symptom of a racist society um because you know uh the, all of a sudden the, the neighborhood got a lot more let's say ethnically diverse you know what i mean and I, I think that all neighborhoods should be ethnically diverse you know what i mean not just the ones on the on the lower income side of town that's just wrong um yeah and 
the, uh, the the thing is, right? I mean, those people suffer a lot more. And as a society, we've we've really failed, right? I mean, for one, they're on the front lines anyway. They're at the grocery store, and you know, the the guy walking around without a mask is breathing on them. And for two, like their kids are the ones who are suffering because they have to work. It's not their fault, like, right? I mean, you know, mom and dad got to work, right? Yeah. Well, Johnny's not gonna get not gonna get the help he needs at school. Or you know, what if you're a family that doesn't speak much English? You know, um, that's you know, um, I mean, imagine you know, Kush, imagine your parents had just come from India. You know what I mean? Like, and they really didn't speak English. And now, fortunately, you don't have that problem. But imagine all of a sudden, you know, you're like taking taking classes at home in middle school, and like your parents don't understand the teacher, they, the teacher doesn't understand them, right? Like the teacher's probably prejudices against them, you know, or might be like, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Especially that happens, those. That I mean, that still happens like to us in like real life. I mean, yeah. like, even you call a restaurant, they're like, you, like, like my mom will say something like, like slightly off or something. Cause obviously, you know, when you grew up speaking a different of course, language, like, of course. you know, and then like the restaurant person will be like, huh? Like, what'd you say? You mean mayonnaise? Like, Shut yeah. the fuck up. Like what? what yeah, are you don't be about? a dick about it. No, I, I agree. Yeah. Your mom's the coolest lady and deserves so much better from than that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but, I, I anyway. Um, yeah, no, and I'm and you know, imagine doing that over Zoom with a teacher who's overworked. Okay. Uh, you know, I ran into one of my old teachers uh while I was on a run, Mr. Fisher. Did you take stats at the career center? No, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't take okay. that. So I had this teacher in high school, Mr. Fisher, really cool guy, a little bit nerdy. Um, I had I had a good time with him. I just called him Fisher. And we were kind of buddies. Um, and he was, he was a cool guy. I liked him. Um, and anyway, he he's a runner too. And so I ran into him while I was running it uh, over in the Ronaldo Gardens. And um, the guy, uh, the guy was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Well, how's teaching at you know Chris?" And he's like, "Well, you know, I've got a class of sixty kids, and it's all virtual. You know, <laughs> I teach eight classes." <laughs> really. Yes, he's, wait, he's still like, he's teaching eight classes with eight 60 classes kids? of stats. No, not two. No, no, sorry. No, I think no, it is eight classes, and it might have been nine classes. I can't remember, but the point is, one of his classes is doubled up. Like he That's has to insane. get a double class for one of them and because everybody's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, you can do it." it doesn't and it's like, how are you supposed to give kids like freaking individual attention when you have like two hundred? Excuse me, two hundred of them, right? And right now, yeah. kids need personal attention more than ever right again especially if you're in a situation where you know you may not have grown up speaking english or you're socioeconomically disadvantaged or you know i mean your parents don't know stats or i mean my parents don't know stats but you know like you know maybe you need tutoring right and you can't ask mom and dad because mom and dad didn't get that far in math you know like my parents my parents they, like i said my parents yeah. that's um <laughs> did you want to um, you want to oh sorry sorry yeah uh, we can move you're... on we can move on no, I was going to say, I, I was going to say, because I think this is, this is just a cool thing, a cool conversation. Yeah. So yeah, I was just going to see where, where it went, but you want to, you want to, uh, you want an, an interesting update on, on a teacher, like who, who, who you probably know. Yeah. Yeah. AP, AP world history with Miss Martin. Guess what's happened to that class? What happened? I was, I was talking to my, because my brother's taking it right now. I was talking oh, really? to him. Oh. Yeah. He submitted this assignment, right? That, that, the class yeah. was awful. He didn't take it. It was not fun. Yeah, like he he so he's taking it over Zoom with Miss Martin, right? Where yeah. she can like hardly give personal attention, and like huh. apparently she doesn't really give a crap anymore. Yeah. And so like I remember he was telling me like there was an assignment, and he like he worked his ass off on this assignment, right? But you know how like she has like that rule for like those certain assignments where you have to like highlight the the different words in your like the specific historical evidence in your assignment. You remember that rule? So I so don't he, think we had that rule at the time. She hadn't developed it yet. Okay. Well, she has it now. <laughs> She's the type that keeps. Adding, she has a lot of ridiculous it, rules, and she like keeps adding them. Yeah. Well, anyway, he didn't highlight his evidence, but he worked like extra hard on this one, and he like it was. I think he said it was like late at night or something, and like he just forgot to highlight his evidence. Dude, I would so totally she, do that. He, he gets a zero on it, and this is the one he's worked the hardest on, and he goes to her. And he's like, why did I get a zero? He's like, I thought this was the best one I ever like wrote. And she was like, you didn't highlight your, your sheet, like your specific historical evidence. And he was like, oh, but like, what was wrong with the paper? She was like, I didn't even read it. And then, and then she goes on to tell him, she goes on to give him notes. She's like, oh, you should have said this and that. And he's like, well, I actually said that and more here and there. And then, and then she makes him literally beg for a grade over Zoom. Like he said, like she literally made him repeat after her, like, I will not like I will not do this again. Like 
all that kind of stuff. It was wild. He was, yeah, that's like borderline abusive. I don't. And this is crazy. during a pandemic over Zoom. That's that's just poor. Yeah, I mean, I remember she had a rule that was like, your paper has to be less than ten percent on Turnitin, and like the ten percent included the date and shit, which always ticked me off. Really? I have like nothing highlighted except for like, you know, Alexander popped up somewhere else, and like the date popped up somewhere else. And then I have like articles highlighted, and be like, oh, you're at twelve percent. She'd be like, oh, well, you get a zero unless you, you know plagiarizing and i'm like i didn't plagiarize like <laughs> i'm talking about a well-known historical event and like there's certain phrases you use you know what i mean like it's not yeah. plagiarism you know what I, like it's just stupid <laughs> it's stupid software doesn't know what it's talking about yeah no i remember she was she was something she thought i had an yeah. ego problem like she oh yeah used to, dude she was like she used to be like yeah you you're really like cocky and i'm like wait what who me <laughs> yeah I mean, not that at the time I like. I also had to say like I'm sure I had the much worse of that same problem than her. But yeah, as like a 50, I don't know how old she is, but as a person who should be, you know, much more mature, she's not. It was yeah. She's like, dude. She's like, I'm gonna show these kids. <laughs> yeah, gotta gotta put it know. on the wall that I went to Stanford. What was it? Stanford, Duke, and Wake. I think that was her. That was her yeah and anyway, wow, dude, we're talking so she's she's so school. nice she was so nice after like after we were done with her class and we we're talking so much shit about her right now yeah i and anyway i yeah i i don't have much patience for her because yeah. and i asked her to write me a recommendation too and she dragged her feet about it so i was like okay fuck that i'm not gonna ask you there are plenty of fucking teachers who like me yeah, I, I <laughs> like literally everyone else in the that. school i don't know why i'm even asking you lady yeah she'd probably say something like has an ego problem anyway we didn't even talk about the topic but it's okay we had a good talk yeah we, we, yeah, we, 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 we ragged on Miss Martin and Miss Martin deserved it. <laughs> yeah. Miss Martin was that lady, dude. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna touch on the on the last one? I think we're we're at 31 yeah. minutes, but we could always spend like Are we really? you know 10. Yeah, we could always we could spend like you know like a few yeah, minutes. Yeah, let's, let's hit it. Let's one. hit it. Because this is my okay. favorite one. Um okay. the one I think well, I, I'm laughing about. Speaking of which, good transition there, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Um, <laughs> see, there's my ego problem. Um Men, I, I wanted to. I recently watched this movie, and this isn't the only inspiration for this, but it makes you think it was a really thought provoking movie called I Care a Lot. It's on Netflix. Go watch it, it's an awesome movie, and um, the ending's great. Um, <laughs> you made me cheer, <laughs> yeah. He's like, anyway, I, I can't spoil it. Um, you should watch it, the, the ending's shocking and awesome. Um, but anyway, it's about this lady who, like, she's a, she's a court appointed guardian, which means that, like. So I'll just use um, Kush as an example um, because it makes it more personal, right? So it, I, it, we got yeah, or just just explain it. it. Just explain it like you're just explaining it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Kush, you know, I'm gonna be your court. I'm gonna I'm gonna take over taking care of your grandmother because your family's not doing a good job of it. Um, I'm just a random person who you've never met before. And see, so yeah. the thing is, I know better about taking care of your grandmother than you do, and you're neglecting her. Um, which may or may not be true. And anyway, so I'm going to go tell a judge that I, that this is the truth. And he's going to sign an order that says, I'm now in charge of your grandma. That isn't, your grandma's not in charge of your grandma and you're not in charge of your grandma, right? I take your grandma and I put her in old age home because I think that's what's best for her. Right? The court does whatever. And basically I have control over her medical care and everything else. And so basically in the movie, this woman abuses this and then takes control of the, over the people's finances because she's allowed to do that. And then like basically um, launders the money to herself. Right. So like she like spins old people's mm -hmm. like she auctions off all their belongings. And then she's like, Oh yeah, I had to spin this and the, that on the other thing and whatever, except she's really taking the money. Right. And then yeah. the doctors. So they keep like writing them prescriptions and stuff. And um, the old people are either out of it or she drugs them. So they're out of it. Um, but anyway, um, watch the show. It's great. Uh, the movie, it's, it's good. And it's not that long. Um, but the point is, I think that oftentimes um, in these situations, um, right, I think our current medical system really over prioritizes maybe um, safety right and the reason i say that that seems like a terrible thing to say the reason i say that is because um the way these places keep track of statistics is they say look um how many falls have you had this month how many deaths have you had this month right they don't ask you how much do your hate patients hate living here right 
How yeah. how many of them are bedridden because you won't let them out of bed? Not because they don't want to get out of bed or they can't get out of bed, but because you keep them in bed for their own safety, aka so you don't have a fall this month, right? Um, and so you get an A plus rating from the government, right? They rate the the government has some sort of rating system for old age homes, and it's known to be quite exploitable. I saw an article today; I didn't read the whole thing, but it was like a lot of these places exploit this government system, so they get an A plus ranking, and they're incredibly abusive to the people who live there. Um, because hmm. they don't really have any advocacy, right? They've been shoved in this home oftentimes against their will and declared incompetent, right? Um, I yeah. don't know. I could give you a chance to weigh in. What do you think about all this so far? No, I mean, it, it's it's messed up. Like, obviously, like, if I imagine myself in, in that situation, like, I, I could see myself becoming, like, Dan Pena and, and just, uh, well, I mean, I guess he's a, do you know who Dan Pena is? No. He, he's like this really old billionaire guy with a really short temper. Uh, <laughs> and anyway, he, he just like, there's like, like just as an example, there's like a clip of him. He lives in this big mansion that he calls the castle. And like one of his employees is like, do you really think we should do this? And he's like, who the fuck do you think you are? Who, like, and he's just this old man, like just it's like six, two, just raging on this guy. That's but I, I have empathy for him when I think about this kind of stuff, like, <laughs> old age homes and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that my sister being like, Hey, shut up. That's fine. I, I can't, I can't hear it on my end. So it will it should be fine. Oh, she's bothering me. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, so anyway, I think that the, the way our medical system kind of keeps track of stuff, and this is something I don't think is good, um, is they keep track of, um, like when, when people, you know, like how many deaths did you have in this duration of time after surgery, right? How many, how many deaths did you have in your old age home, right? Uh, how, I should, the retirement community, whatever we call it now. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm not talking about like the nice ones where like the old, the, like the older people like hang out and like play golf or whatever, right? I'm talking about like the ones that are like people are pretty sick, you know, like yeah, and maybe not that ritzy, you know what I mean? Not like not like the the glorified golf club, okay? Um, country club, whatever. Uh, so. Right. I, I think that it's really important to balance the well-being of the people with their safety, is what I'm trying to say. And I think oftentimes our medical system isn't really optimized to do that, right? We want to keep people alive and keep them safe no matter what the cost is. But what if the cost is their happiness, right? What if the cost is, okay, well, grandma wants to go for a walk, but grandma might fall. There's a one in a thousand chance grandma falls, and that's bad for the nursing home. So the nursing home's like, oh, no, grandma, you got to stay in bed. But grandma needs a walk, right? Grandma, Grandma's sad if grandma doesn't get her walk in. So like should grandma be able to take her walk? Yeah, she grandma should be able to take her walk, right? And um, yeah, you know, keep an eye on her, but you know, let people make their own decisions. I don't know. Um, when they can, you know, of course. Yeah, I I'm confused too uh -huh. how did that how this works from like a, a legal perspective. Like, because at what point, like, like what what has to be done that like you can like go from being an adult with freedoms to like being someone who's like incompetent and like not able to make decisions for yourself so my understanding i don't know much about the process but there's a hearing and the judge like like they usually oftentimes they'll do like an examination or something um actually you don't have to be present is my understanding um in certain conditions which is how in the movie the lady was supposed to was able to um take over the lives of very competent individuals um, because they wouldn't, they didn't have to show up for the hearing. Um, of course that may or may not happen in real life. I don't know. Um, but if it is, it's messed up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that it's really important, um, to be very careful in applying these labels like that. Um, and to be very important to, I think it's very important to, to, to be charitable, you know what I mean? To say, look, you know, like let the people's family take care of them. I don't know. Um, but I guess another another story. I guess I guess it's, it's kind of story time today. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm just doing like story time. Uh, another story I read about was um, and this was a while ago in my bioethics course, which is one of my favorite. If you ever get a, if you ever get a chance to take a bioethics, take it. It's awesome. At least my my class was. Um, uh, this guy, uh, um, he he was in a hospital. Um, and he was, he had a, he had a life-saving operation. Okay. I think he, I think it was open heart surgery or something. Anyway, um, it left him branded. Unfortunately, the operation didn't go as planned and, um, he didn't really make it out. 
in any sense of the word alive, except for his organs were still functioning. Um, and it became clear very quickly that he wasn't going to recover. Unfortunately, um, the doctors were in a pilot program at this hospital where they were allowing new types of procedures to be done there that hadn't been done there previously. Um, and I forget the details, but basically they were seeing how the hospital performed, right? And they were gonna have a review and see if the thing could continue there. Um, and so they wanted to have good outcomes. And there are certain criteria here that's like, you know, did the patient die due to the surgery, right? right and how long afterwards etc and it turns out that after a year and a day or whatever i think it was a year and a day on a year and a day it's in a different category if the patient dies mm. and so it might even be it might have even been a few years i think it was a few years they kept this poor guy alive anyway i, I don't remember um but they would they kept him alive and they kind of strung his wife along we're like yeah well you never know what could happen in these situations we can't face say for sure 100 percent certain he won't come back you know um he still seems in good health you know physically you know kind of giving our hope false hope that he would re-emerge um you know from this breathing corpse that he had become right and um and so they kept him on life support um and and bankrupted his family and everything to keep him on life support and the reason they were doing it is because they wanted to get to that next threshold however long it was they wanted to keep him alive until he had been alive long enough that he wouldn't fall into the bad category of surgery survival. Um, you know what I mean? And so I was like, at the time I had a really like a positive, cause I mean, I've, I've had a really positive experience with the medical community um, when I've worked there and stuff. And I was like, wow, really people do this? And it was really shocking to me. Um, I don't know, but I thought it was really sad. Um, I don't know. What do you think of that about cases like that? Yeah, no, I mean, it's messed up. It's messed up that, that like some, something like that can happen all for funding. Um, I think it just shows you the dark side of humanity. Yeah. Um, I will say I'm, I'm happy that we slipped in that, that last, uh, that last little bit there. Um, and I, I know we're, I think we're at a uh, 41 minutes uh, now. So if you want, uh, if you want to share like any closing thought, we can probably just wrap it up. We can wrap it up. Um, I'm done. I've talked enough for one day. No, it was that. That was a really in, like interesting story. Though. I thought like, I thought I it was it was kind of Alex story time today, and I that wasn't no like, no no. It was definitely it was some Alex story time it, it today, was, and they were interesting stories. Yeah, no, they, it was all it was all interesting, and I would have never heard that if it wasn't from you. So, yep. But shout anyway. out to Doctor Cad, like what a cool guy. I've got him again this. Yeah, season. he's a he's a cool professor. I yeah, these classes. So. Yeah, really interesting. Well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I said it was a really interesting uh, paper we read that, that about that guy. Yeah, changed my perspective. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Outro. Let's do it. Yeah, I think you're you're first. Oh yeah, I am first. Ah, shoot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thanks everyone for uh, listening in today. Uh, we had a really great time, kind of rambling about different bioethics things. Uh, had some Alex story time, um, and talked about COVID a little bit. And you know, when does that darn government get to quit fooling in our lives? You know, and we're glad they're there but you know government one of those things you can't live with them you can't live without them, you know anyway um so all you man yeah and if uh if you enjoyed today's video make sure to go find ted cruz and grab him and smash the absolute crap out of like button with him uh i don't, I don't know where that i was just because you're talking about texas and i was just like you know it, it might be a good good callback anyway if you enjoyed today's video uh you want to show some support please make sure to smash that like button um, and make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That way, every time we post on Sunday at 9.30 in the morning, you get a little notification. You click on it. It takes you straight to the episode. And you can listen to it while you're cooking, cleaning, driving, whatever. Uh, super easy. Um, and uh, that's all from us this week. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.